welcome to another episode of Devil's Eve with Ghoulish Cop. Today I'm going to be uh, showing you my monster clay recipe. Uh, you've seen a, a few already from Ramoth and uh, Halloweenville. Mine is based on a uh, recipe I found at Ultimate Paper Mache from uh, Johnny Good. She's a paper mache artist. I've uh, been doing it for 50 years. And hers is similar to uh, Halloweenville's. Um, it's based on uh, toilet paper. has uh, some different ingredients and all that. Mine is, as I said, based on hers, but it's probably close to uh, Ramathetol's as well. Mine uses a uh, the cellulose insulation and um, then builds on what Johnny Good uh, uh, offered in her recipe. Interestingly, she uh, recently uh, saw my homemade glue recipe and tried it out with her recipe and she actually uh, liked the homemade glue uh, so much she's incorporated it into uh, her recipe now. Now I use this much uh, insulation, it's a pitcher, so I use 48 ounces of uh, insulation here and this will be turned into a mash with uh, using water. just want to say one other thing about uh, the insulation. This is my bale of insulation. Now I've had this bale for two plus years, say two years now, as you can see, I haven't made a dent in this thing yet. With all the paper mache props that I've made, this stuff lasts a long, long, long time. So I think it's actually even cheaper than the, uh, the tissue paper method. A bale goes for about $11 at Home Depot or Lowe's. So uh, very cost effective and uh, makes a great uh, clay product. So what I do is 48 ounces of the, the insulation. It'll, as I said, I'll fill this up with water, blend it, and uh, make a nice mash out of it, drain the water out of it, and you'll end up with about a, a cup and a half of uh, the pulp. To that, add a cup of drywall compound, joint compound, three quarters of a cup of glue. Now this is my homemade glue that you've seen in other uh, videos a half a cup of flour and two tablespoons of boiled linseed oil. This uh, makes the clay smoother, uh, gives it a good texture and uh, uh, actually helps give it a clay-like uh, appearance. So uh, right now I'll uh, whip up the uh, insulation. And then we start filling it up with water. Okay, once it's been uh, thoroughly uh, slurried, I then uh, pour it into a strainer like this, to drain off the excess water. As you can see, you end up with quite a lot. But once you start mashing it down and taking the water out of it, the volume will reduce. So I'll strain this out of the uh, container now. Once we squeezed out the water, what we're left with is this pulp soaked pulp that's been finely ground down so there's no big chunks like you'll find. So I take the cellulose insulation and I put that all in there. Mix in the joint compound. Half a cup of flour. The 
blue. The rest of the glue. And the linseed oil. Oh, that I need Two tablespoons. One. Two. And so we end up with something that looks like this. Oops. There we go. And now I just reach my hands in there and start mixing it around. I find it takes about five minutes of uh, good mixing with my hand. Okay, I've been mixing it for about five minutes now. And what I do is, as you can see, I just squeeze it and let it come to my fingers. And that way I make sure that there's no lumps in here. And uh, because you want it smooth. And uh, just when you spread it out, then on your form, You've got a, a nice smooth uh, surface that won't require much sanding or uh, texturing afterwards, depending on what you're going to do with it. For the storage container I use, and you should try to use like an airtight one, like a Tupperware or something like that, uh, to keep it fresh for a while, uh, you can put a, a very uh, thin layer of water over the top of it. And just like a regular joint compound, it will uh, keep the uh, mixture fresh. And what I do is I put a piece of uh, plastic wrap, and uh, then I cover it with a lid, and uh, I put it away. So, and then when you're ready to use it, you just take the uh, uh, the, pit, the plastic wrap off, pour off the water, or even you can mix it in because it might dry a little bit underneath and then just mix it in and you've, uh, you're ready to go then using the clay and uh, so now you can make this uh, a drier consistency but you can see it holds its form and stuff like that and if you're going to use it in a negative mold like I did with the uh, those little skulls here as I do with these, you can get some really fine detail to show up on these, on your mold. So, uh, this I'll, I can cover with uh, spar varnish, let that dry, then I can paint it, and then uh, if it's going to be outside, I'll put spar varnish on. If it's an in indoor uh, prop, I don't need to. And then after painting it, I can cut coat it with uh, deck sealer and uh, so there I think it's got a lot of uses and uh, I think uh, it's a good addition to the uh, monster clay uh, literature that's out there now and you can see that you're not getting that big uh, chunks of paper like I've had before and uh, it sometimes made fine detail tough. This will spread out nice and uh, allow for uh, the fine detail. I'm going to be working on my cauldron for the cauldron creep. You can see we had a uh, landscape uh, planter that we were using and I've uh, created a uh, cauldron shape by putting some cardboard ribs that you can see underneath there. Uh, hot glued them onto the uh, onto the planter, covered it with uh, uh, duct tape. The entire thing, and then over the duct tape, uh, I did two layers of uh, paper mache. Now you can still see some of the ribs here, and uh, so what I'll be doing is I'll be making a batch of my paper clay and covering the entire. 
uh, form with the paper clay. So, when you're going to uh, apply the, uh, the clay, just have to put it on and uh, start smoothing it out with a, uh, use a spatula, like I said. And it goes on like frosting. One thing I'm going to want is uh, a thing of water. And that'll just help keep it from sticking to everything. But, as I said, you can see that you can get very thin layers, as thin as a uh, quarter of an inch. And then if there's some spots that uh, end up showing up, you can go back over and put a second layer on top of it wherever it's uh, too thin. I actually like to take my finger and pound it out like this. on getting everything covered. And so that's the uh, paper clay. And then this, once this is uh, covered and dry, I'll uh, be putting over it a uh, gesso, um, which is very similar to uh, monster mud, but with a uh, another ingredient or two, which I'll uh, show in a future uh, video. And then this will just be a long, tedious process of uh, applying. And I won't bore you with that. But I'll show you how it comes out at the end. And here's, not the finished product, but it's almost done. It's getting there. It's got the uh, monster clay on the outside all the way around. I put some uh, details on here like uh, there's banding and this is one of those uh, small skulls I showed you previously attached there. It's got a few around on the outside. Still to come in is another band going along here and uh, a few other details that will be on here. The rim of the pot out of as you can see back there, that's out of the uh, pipe insulation. So uh, that was put on, taped in place, and then covered with uh, the clay. So all this will be covered with uh, spar varnish, and then it'll be painted and covered with uh, deck sealer, and it'll be ready to go for uh, Halloween. So there's a lot of good uh, paper clay recipes out there, monster clay recipes. And uh, this is just another one that you might want to consider trying. So if you like what you see, subscribe to the channel and check out my blog, www.devilseve.blogspot.com, where you'll find a lot of ideas and information on Halloween and haunt-related topics. Thanks for watching.